Hey, hey. Hi, you guys. Happy Monday. Golly. I am back in the place that I live called my house. Having been gone all last week. And I don't have on any makeup. Okay, that's not true. I did put on some lip gloss. But I just couldn't. I just couldn't. And thank you for understanding. Um, I'm about to bring my friend in. So, Shauna, hang tight for one second. Um, Shauna uh, Nequist is about to pop on with me. So, last week she and I were at Blackberry Farm. We're going to tell you about it in just a second here. We're going to tell you about our time there. And consequently, that is why I don't have any makeup on. I spent all my days last week wearing makeup and like clothes, like dresses or whatever. And I just, I, I hit my limit. And I'm just, I'm, un, I'm unable to continue it. I'm sorry, my eyes are red too. I just got out of the shower and I have this terrible habit of scrubbing my face with soap and just letting the soap get all in my eyes. And so my eyes are always red after a shower and I don't, that's just a little something new for you to know about me. Okay. Um, if you don't already know Shauna, I know that you do. You know, she's one of my longtime favorite friends, favorite, 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 15 years back. And so we did a writer's retreat together um, right outside Knoxville, Tennessee at Blackberry Farm last week we're about to talk about. Um, and so I wanted her to come on. Um, and also what we're about to talk about in addition to our time is this, summer parenting. Okay, so those of you who have just finished school or you're about to finish school and the kids are home and all the rhythms are different and everything's different and but your job keeps going. That's fun fact. Grown ups don't have summers. Um, and it's like, what do we do? Sean and I are going to talk a little bit about what we have figured out over the years in terms of summer parenting and some of our best advice. Um, so. If you want a little bit more on this, a little bit more instruction, a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more ideas, a little bit more everything, um, I have a Parenting Me course, by the way. You know, we're creating and developing these Me courses for you, kind of creating a library. And one of our newest ones is on parenting, and particularly parenting tweens and teens. It's packed. Literally, it's everything I've ever learned. So just know that. Um, it's everything I've ever learned. We talk about how to release shame, how to build intentional connections. We talk about communication. We talk about sex. We talk about boundaries. We talk about what's codependency in parenting. What isn't it? All of it. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can go to mecourse.org. And if you put in the code parenting20, you can get $20 off. Okay. Without further ado, let me bring in my favorite person. We're, we've got things to tell you. There she is. It takes like twice for this to take. And I don't know why. I don't know why. So if you don't pop in here immediately, I'll send it again. Hi. Hi. Can't believe it. I'm so happy this, to see you again. Like we get to do this all the time now. This is what we do now. We just <laughs> see each other. We look at each other's faces and we also wear our glasses, I see. I <laughs> loved hearing you say um, yeah. that you couldn't put on any more makeup because I literally just said to Aaron as I was yeah. getting ready for this, uh -huh. I was like, Aaron, yeah. I, I can't anymore. I can't. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay. That's right. And to be fair, more to the point for you, You've been in hair, makeup, and outfits for, is it six weeks? Oh, yeah, more than that, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, for book launch season. Mm -hmm. yeah. And listen, even just being with you last week at Blackberry, you and I were fancier than literally we have ever been in our entire friendship all combined. Oh, that's that one week. 100% true, yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you kept walking out in a dress, and I was like, what is this one? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> What are you wearing? Well, who are we? It was like more mascara than I've ever worn in my whole life. Yeah. I can't do it. I haven't worn a stitch of makeup since I got home. No one. So, um, hello. I'm so happy hello. to see you. Happy Let's, see you. Um, you're the best one to kind of do a little touchdown on Blackberry, like what it is, why it's precious, and what we were doing there. And then I'm going to jump into Okay, so Blackberry Farm is a working farm and also resort um, outside Knoxville, Tennessee in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. And um, I have been wanting to go there forever. It's so, if you're a person who really loves hospitality, like the, the, yeah. like the way people organize experiences and spaces and meals and all that, if that's like your jam, Blackberry yeah. Farm is a, is legendary. And so yeah. like 10 years ago, um, 
my parents had some friends and they, uh, you know, they're like your parents' friends. You're like meeting them. It's fine, whatever. But they happened to say, oh, yes, and we live at a place called Blackberry Farm if you'd ever like to come visit. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I am in the car and I'm driving there now. Yes, I say yes to that invitation, whether or not it was real. I want yes. to do this. 100%. And yes, yeah, so it, um, so I got about 10 years ago, went there for the first time. And then since then have gone back every single time they invite me yeah. to um, host a writing workshop or an event about a new book, or I've done a handful of events, both there are two properties, Blackberry Farm and Blackberry Mountain. And so they asked me with this new book coming out to do another event. And I said, absolutely, yes. And then I texted you and said, please come with me. And so we spent four days with a group of about 25 people. Yeah. Um, creativity, writing, storytelling, um, publishing industry, yeah. getting outside, you know, tapping into like our senses and doing some creative and, and then having like these incredible meals, mm. um, with, like beautiful flowers. And it was just like, what a delight. Yeah. Oh, so dreamy. And I mean, I know I said this a hundred times last week, but in general, um, when we're doing that kind of work, we're a little bit more accustomed to a, a big, a bigger crowd. Like a, it's a room full of people or it's a whole thing or, um, but this little tiny experience with 25 people, I mean, we know every one of their stories now, every one of them. We know where they were born. We know about their daughters. We know about who they dated in college. Like we got a lot of quality time together. Um, not just around some of their writing and storytelling dreams, but around their lives. And it was precious. Like, I loved it. I mean, I just, there wasn't one second that dropped to the ground. Um, to your point on the hospitality, at one point I went over to Shauna's cabin. We were having breakfast on her little porch while we were kind of getting ready for our morning session, going through our notes, making sure we were squared away. And our breakfast is there. And they brought us like, I think it was just the little coffee creamer. I'm just about to say yeah. what you said. It was like yeah. a little coffee creamer pitcher, but on top of it is this little cute, fancy sort of lid that just kept it all in. And it just looked like something in a tiny little dollhouse. And you were just, you held it up and you were like, why? Look at this. This is why I love this place because of this lid. I'm like, yeah. I know what you're saying right now. Like that special attention to detail, a little handwritten notes, fire bed. Come on, come on. They, the way that they use little details yeah. to tell the story of what the farm is about and to make people feel welcome in it, they, it, it's like every possible opportunity to make it a little more special, they do it. Mm. it um, every time I'm there, I cry because yeah. there's something that touches me so deeply. And I think like, thank God for people who think this way and who build right. things like this. And I mean, it's just... It delights me. It's so much same. Um, before we kind of move into some of our summer parenting hacks, um, can you talk just a little bit about why? Let's be let's be square and honest. Blackberry's special and not a super easy reach. So that would be totally on the outer edges of a normal experience, <laughs> like very out of normal. However, making time for our craft, for writing, for development, for learning, for workshops, for other reader feedback, um, make carving out a little bit of space to nurture a gift, to nurture a story forth, whatever it may be, that matters. And it doesn't have to be fancy to do it. Can you talk a little bit, because you're good at this really, really, really good at this. You're good at boundaries. You are good at time management. You are good at little periods of quiet with intention. I'd love to just hear you talk to the people watching who have something inside them to bring forth, to nurture, but they're just like, well, when the hell am I going to do this in this <laughs> noisy house? Right? I, well, your thoughts. I, so I would generally say I'm a, um, I'm a work at home, work in your normal life kind of person for, for the most part. I write almost every day. Yeah, it, it's, it's a normal part of my life. Um, 
and I make time for it and I show up for it like I'm keeping a meeting or a dentist appointment. Right. And also, I have found that there is a tremendous value, two different things I think we experienced last week. There's a tremendous value in getting away occasionally. And I usually do it twice during a book project, which means like twice in a year and a half or two years. It's not like every month. Totally. And it's usually two different things. Right at the beginning, I need to get a way to sort of dream, to let things get really quiet, to, to follow every idea all the way to the end and see what this new project is going to be about. Yep. And then I need to go away again at the end of a project to sort of close all the windows that have been open for the last yep. year and a half. Is this really doing what I wanted it to do? Is it coming together the way I want it to? So I need to get away two times, again, like once a year. But the other thing that we did that was so important was being away together. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, having other writers in my life, whether it were, you know, flying somewhere to meet each other or just doing phone calls, to have other writers that you can talk with, not mm -hmm. even about the specifics, but just about like, um, how are you doing this? And how have you figured this out? Or can I run this idea by you? Or how have you un untangled this complicated part of being a writer? To have mm. some time with other creative people is really important for me. So I think mm. that's some of what I loved about last week's event as well. And I'm sure you're about to say this, but we did talk about like, let's do this in other settings. Let's yeah. maybe you and I dream about ways to do it in your hometown or my hometown or mm -hmm. uh, just a day long or at a lower price point. So I think there is something there that, for both of us. Mm. Yeah, I do too. So everybody paying attention, just stay tuned on that. We, we dropped that little idea. Uh, frankly, we, we've dropped it into our conversation before. Mm -hmm. um, but Sean and I brought this back up again this week and it just kind of went, we could do this in a way that is accessible and life-giving and longer form, um, mm -hmm. where we really were able to walk people through whatever it is, that whatever their writing process, the publishing process, just, just whatever it is, a little bit more at length, a little bit more in depth. And so we're just noodling that everybody, okay? So um, I love that idea. Like I'm still sitting with it. It's still like rising up in my little brain since we got back. Um, and I'm excited to see what we come up with. You and I come to the table of writing and creativity and process in some similar ways and in some different ways, which is great. Um, like together we make one whole person. So, totally. <laughs> so something in the combination feels whole. Um, <laughs> Jen was teasing me, um, at the event that like when she came to her session, she had like her laptop and her typed mm -hmm. notes, several pages of single spaced right. notes That's right. and like a, like a laptop bag. Um, <laughs> and I was wearing like a, like a caftan <laughs> and I had everybody like write about their senses and their feelings while we were outside next to a screen. That's Listen. sort of <laughs> exactly how we are. Yeah. And I love it. And there's a place for all of it. Writing's mm -hmm. all over the place. Like sometimes it is, walking by a stream and smelling things with your nose and writing it in your journal in long form with your handwriting. And sometimes it's brass tacks. And so it all, it all goes in the bucket. Anyway, I look forward to dreaming that up with you and see what we come up with. Um, you and I, I am only just a hair ahead of you in parenting. You are in the youngish teens, tweeny space. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'm in mid teens and above. So we're really just Henry's 15. Mm -hmm. And he's your oldest and so yeah. Remy's 16 and she's my youngest. So yeah. we just, we're adjacent in parenting. And I'd like to hear your thoughts on this because, okay, I'm just going to say this. When the kids were younger, look more kind of like the elementary-ish space, like kind of right in there. Yeah. I would start worrying and feeling anxious about summer in February, <laughs> I would start panicking like, oh God, school's almost, I mean, what are we gonna do? It's all day, it's all day. Like, like you look at your clock, it's been all day. You've done 17 activities and it's 1.15 in the afternoon, right? They've been- Totally. Uh, you've done it all. I just used to feel anxious about keeping the house afloat 
keeping the kids just not on a screen 12 hours a day, I guess. That was the bar. Um, also, doing my job, doing my job that happens to be from home, which sometimes masquerades as not a job um, yes. because, well, you're the home parent. Um, and I don't, I went, I had five books in a row before somebody finally grabbed me by the shoulders and went, what are you doing? Do in September, five, five in a row, do in September. And so, okay, I'd like us to talk a little bit. Most of those days are behind us. Now, my kids are big. I only have two left at home. They have jobs. The, 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 the seniors graduated. He's done. It's like, does he live here? I don't know. Um, <laughs> so this is mostly in my rearview mirror, kind of still on your plate. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what we have learned over the years, um, parenting rowdy kids all summer without being their cruise ship director and without just letting them be feral. What's your experience here? Um, well, I, I mean, some of my biggest, one of my biggest perspectives on parenting is that everything's different every school year. Like whatever oh, I, like I that. think I learned this last school year is about to change for, you oh. know, different schedule, different age Good. kids, different needs, different everything. So I can only ever see one year at a time. So this yeah. year, I'll tell you what our plan is based on what we learned last year. Like so it. as you know, I like to go to the lake in the summer. I, do I would, I would like to go from the Friday of Memorial Day weekend yes. till Labor Day. That's right. 100%. Yes. That conservatively, that's how much I would like to go. The rest of my family, that is, they do not want to do that. They want to go yes. for a lot less than that, yes. which is okay. We compromise. But so my plan this year is we still have two more weeks of school here. So our kids yeah, are still in school. Do. Lord. But then, so of course, what I thought was we should leave the second they get done. Like the, the car should be packed. That's right. We should just whisk them away to the lake. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. This is my plan. We okay. stay in New York, in the city, long enough for them to get really bored here. And then magically, oh, look, we're going to the lake. If I made them go to the lake right when school's done, I they'd be just outraged at me. Uh -huh. How dare I take them away from this yeah. super fun city? But like a couple weeks of super fun city and they're like, oh, guess what? We're bored here. Uh -huh. Perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think what, I like what you're saying right now, because really no matter what somebody's scenario is, wherever they live, whatever's available to them, whatever they can or can't do, there's a pacing uh, yeah. of the summer that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, like building in rhythms of high activity, low activity. Yeah. High mom touch low mom touch um i'm gonna kind of run this ship you guys figure it out i think what i used to do when the kids were little <laughs> i can literally point back to some like blogs do you remember about blogs um i've heard of them yeah remember them um where i would be like i could feel that there there's jen in first week of june she's full of enthusiasm look at her there's like Fresh. there's like charts for what they have to do every morning there's right charts yeah, it we've lasts made, three days. Yeah. It lasts three days. We've mm -hmm. made the list. Here's our bucket list, and here's everything mm -hmm. we're going to do this summer. And, yep. um, this is what we're going to do on Tuesdays. Yep. This is what we're uh, – I mean that, too. I mean it with all the fervor of a fresh summer mom. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would do is I would end up burning myself out in the mom-centric stuff so early that I was just – I would I would end up phoning it in by the middle of the summer because, first of all, I was tired of it all. I was sick of it all. We'd done it all. We did it too soon. We peaked too soon. That, oh, that um, is a major danger. You have to think about that. Yes. Yeah. What are the rhythms like? And, and I think this idea that our kids are incapable of filling time by themselves is trash. I mean, excuse me, Shauna, will you please tell me um, how much Lynn entertained you all summer long as your personal friend? Um, I'll tell you exactly what she did. Uh -huh. She taught me to read and then got me a library card. <laughs> Done. And, and, and it was really like, she was like, yeah. well, I don't know, like, <laughs> and some of it is we're both such bookworms that it worked for yeah. us, but like, for sure. yeah, I, I, that's what she did. She taught me to read and she got me a library card and that's what I did all summer, every summer of my life. And that's what I do uh -huh. with our kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, we buy, um, pa like printer paper by the ream. And a yeah. new set of markers, and we're like, make something. 
you can use all 500 sheets if you want to. What? Make yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Read stuff, make stuff, figure it out. We're not going to do yes. it all together every second. But uh, to your point, I think um, it's okay for them to get a little bored. It's okay for them to for get sure. a little resourceful. And um, those first couple of weeks, I really let it be like pretty loose. Yeah. Because they've just come through the structure totally. of the whole year. They don't need a little later in the summer, we do some like planned activities yeah. on a little bit more of a schedule. But those yeah. first couple of weeks, they get to just like goldfish crackers and popsicles for breakfast while they rewatch uh -huh. Elf in July. 100%. You know, that feel, yeah. that's what summer's for. Yeah, I think having some things on hand that they know, these are always available to you at any point. I would go at the beginning of the summer and just spend a, a king's ransom like at Michael's, you know, mm -hmm. or like a craft store, I would absolutely fill the coffers. Here's yep. every kind of craft supply, all the glue, all the markers, all the paper. You, you can use it with impunity. You don't have to ask. I don't care if it runs out, we'll replace it. Like this is your closet for creation. Um, when the kids were a little bit younger, um, we downloaded a couple of apps on their phone where they can make movies. Um, yep. And so they did a lot of cinematography. Um, and thank the Lord, I still have some of those for posterity's sake. Um, I'm like, go make a movie. And then we'd like set it up and watch it on the big screen in the living room later that night. But that could take up a surprising amount of time. And also, just go figure it out is a full sentence. Like, and they do. And they, they will, do. Just like we did. Just yep. like we did. I had one, exactly one flex that made it past the crucible of the, um, the charts in the um, summer calendar systems <laughs> that, I, that lasted uh, and generally eight days. Um, the one thing that we did summer after summer um, was we had what I called Mystery Thursdays. And so don't get too excited. It wasn't like that fancy, but it was something. It was something they didn't know was happening. And so we did a lot of it was free. We would like take a picnic up to some of the kind of like, I can't really say waterfalls. That's not real true here in central Texas, but a creek that moves. Um, yeah. Okay. We gotcha. would, yeah. Sometimes we'd go see a movie in the middle of the day. Sometimes we would um, meet up with friends and have like a little float day, whatever it was. It was none of it was ever really fancy, but something about it was fun because they didn't know what it was going to be. And what so they, and they knew it was going to be on Thursday. I'm like, I'll tell you how to dress. And if we're going to be outside a lot, or if you need water shoes or, um, and so that filled in this gap for us that felt a little structured, barely, yeah. barely one, one day of, out of seven, um, slightly structured and also alleviated some of this self-imposed mom guilt when I didn't feel like I was keeping them active enough or busy enough or giving them enough things to do. I don't know. Mystery Thursdays. We did it forever. I did love that. Any other I hacks? Super fun. You know, the other thing that I'm thinking though, when I look back at our summers, um, the amount of time that kids can spend in the water is almost like infinity. So whether it's a lake, a, a creek, a stream, uh -huh. a neighborhood pool, a neighbor's pool, so I'm always surprised. Um, the, the being in the water and on the beach like yeah. right when they get there they're like ew I don't like these sand toys and we forgot this and I'm hot and then they like get into a zone and they can stay till dark and so I I feel Crazy. like water of any kind doesn't have to be fancy doesn't need to be like a luxury experience but uh -huh. kids can spend so much time just playing around in the water and that's so good for them and so like I don't know it just feels life it's wholesome it is. It's so wholesome. You are so right. Even the littles. The oh, littles yeah. can stay on the beach from sun up to sundown. It is and then they fall of course literally fall asleep standing up. Yes. They fall asleep absolutely standing up. They're zombies. Okay. That's like And and then win -win. It, the next morning you change their diaper and you realize <laughs> they <laughs> ate all of the sand on that entire beach and it is now in their dirty diaper. I remember the first time that happened, I was <laughs> terrified. I was like, I, I, what did he get? Yeah, like a shovel straight to his mouth? But anyway, so this is my other thing. And this is like okay. my total Midwest thing. Okay, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, berry picking and fruit picking of any kind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kids so love it. 
And then, yes, yeah, like that's like the most Michigan thing I've ever said. Yes. But kids like it because it's a project. Yeah. And you get to be outside and you, there's like, you kind of have to learn to do it and you can kind of race each other. Um, and then bonus, you all get to eat it. It's like the Word. best project ever. So, so in Michigan, we're always, you know, it's strawberries first. Yeah. then um, cherries and raspberries, and then uh -huh. blueberries are the end. And yeah. so we just like wear that out. Absolutely. Um, it, I mean, you could look at it as free labor is also an, another way to look at it. You've got like a lot of extra hands picking for you. But I think it's really fun. I totally, our kids oh. are like, oh my gosh, not again. But then they get all the blueberries. So there you oh, go. Oh gosh, it's so true. Um, also one um, kind of rule slash boundary that I made every summer and it became permanent is because the eating thing is so daunting, the I'm hungry thing, um, which is, as far as I can tell, endless, like literally endless. Like they wake up and their mouths are saying, we're hungry. And then they say it all day long and then they go to sleep. That's the yeah. summer. That's, That's true. Goes. Yeah. And it makes me kind of crazy and ragey and like bananas. And so I told the kids, I knew when they were little, I, I started this probably too soon, it's fair to say that. Um, you feed yourself breakfast mm -hmm. and you yeah. feed yourself lunch. Now here, I'm gonna make a list. Cause of course they're like, oh, I'm a baby. I'm like, oh no, no, no <laughs> you're not, you're not a baby. Here's everything that you can make. And yeah. we have a list in the kitchen. I will feed you dinner every night and here's all the snacks. And so taking myself off the breakfast and lunch rotation, because by the way, this is probably true for you and your boys. It's for sure true with mine times five and spanning like eight year age gap. They all wake up at different times. Like when a child comes down the stairs at 1.30 PM and asks <laughs> what for breakfast, I'm like, no, sir. No, I do not even entertain the question. I didn't hear you. It's like you didn't speak. Um, and so you're on your own. Feed yourself. Get yourself to dinner having eaten food. Yeah. Uh, I'm not fussy about it. What, yeah. what do you want to have? You want waffles again? They're in the freezer. Uh, and I really, like, I, uh, in the summer, uh, uh, popsicles count as food. Um, swimming counts as a shower. Oh, Pajamas yes. count as formal wear. I like <laughs> summer to be different than yeah. the rest of the year. We, I like they thing. have to do a lot of stuff during the school year. I yeah. want summer to be like a little weird and a little dirty and a little loose. Um, Absolutely. That's what it's for. And so, uh, no, I'm not doing bacon and eggs at eight o'clock sharp. It, it like, uh -huh. find yourself a freeze pop and go on your way. <laughs> that feels fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so much. The last thing I'll say before you have to go back to your day is without exception, my, the through line for me on both getting through, to be honest, but also finding a way to enjoy summers every summer with five kids to manage was pairing up like a legal partnership practically with my friends. And oh, friends. absolutely. 100% I mean, yes. There was no other gear. It wasn't yeah. like, what am I going to do by myself all summer? It was like, what are we doing? Who has some, I have half a bag of grapes. Who's got some bread? Like we team up and just piecemeal together some crappy lunch for the children out of Tra uh, the ends of our trash essentially yes and we'd bathe each the kids in each other's baths and we would lock them in each other's backyards and we would just put the hose on them I don't know what um but it was shared it's and the only turns, way it's yep. the only way it's we'd the turn, only way we'd say let me have them all yep. I mean I can have five I can have eight it's all the same let me have them this whole day please go please go do whatever it is that you would like to do on this day um, whether you want to get your work done or you want to stay in bed all day and we'd swap. And yeah. that was also a lifesaver. Cause I've discovered, I think maybe you and I've talked about this before, but sometimes when I'm overwhelmed, my instinct, my internal instinct is like, Oh, oh, this, the whole thing is to be overhauled. Like this is an absolute disaster. The whole system's wrong. It's a complete setup. How can I turn it on? In, but really what's true is that usually just turning one or two dials a little bit makes a Absolutely. big difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's not the whole thing. And so I found that was one little dial. If I could work in a day, one day, 
yep. when I was off the clock and I could breathe and have silence in my ears. Oh, I was ready to go for the next six. Like it was a small dial that helped a lot. Did and you I have think any that's... of those? Yeah, to, and to talk to the other parents in your life, moms, dads, whoever, and, and to kind of look ahead and say, like, this is what I need. Like, I, I need this amount of space, or I need some connection about once a week, or, or I need uh -huh. to be able to walk by myself, or, you know, whatever it is that you need. I need three yeah. hours of work time. That Then we can help each other with that, so we're all taking pieces of it together, instead yeah. of that idea that it's, like, just you forever, um, because we all still have work to do. We all have, you know, need to be alone a little bit of the time. We all have normal life things we have to do. So to, to kind of view it as a group project every once in a while really, really helps me. Completely the same. Um, and just a reminder that we don't have to thread this needle exactly right. And we aren't, um, we aren't in charge of ensuring that every moment of our kids' summers is intellectually stimulating and full of activity. And that's not our deal. It never was. In fact, that's not even good for them. So let out the leash a little, let out the line, let them just wander around and be filthy and like moderately in danger, but not so much, but just enough that you're like, well, I don't know if this is okay. And um, let them be bored, right? Like bored. That's, that's not necessarily a problem to solve on our end. They'll figure it out. If they get Good. bored enough, they might like read a book or something. How lovely. Yeah. That's so right. Um, okay. That's it. That's awesome. Thank you. What are you doing the rest of your day? Oh, I'm having some friends over for dinner. Oh, um, And what, I'm very excited making? about it. Um, enchiladas and Mexican mm -hmm. street corn mm -hmm. and guacamole and salsa and palomas. And I'm trying a new dessert. It's not really even a dessert, but um, the it's sort of like that version of affogato, but with Kahlua. So oh, you warm up the Kahlua my. and then put it on, the Kahlua is hot and you put it on a scoop of vanilla ice cream. So you get that like hot Shana. cold thing. Does that sound good? Yeah. Shana. You just drop that menu into our ears just yes. so casually. Like, <laughs> well, we're going to start with a little Mexican street corn. I mean, everything you just said is all my favorite everything, as you know. So That's true. That's true. I know that about you. Oh, I wish you could come. Guest. I yeah. wish I could come. <laughs> um, thanks for um, hopping on today. By yeah, the way, everybody, just FYI, so you know, Shauna's latest book is not only out, but it is the Jen Hatmaker book club selection for August. Oh, so yeah. thank oh, you yeah. for doing that. Yay. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for writing it. Don't be <laughs> crazy. Um, I'm thrilled. Like we wanted a killer summer um, reading palette. And so we were so excited to put your book in as the August selection and it's meaningful and it's connective and it is, to use your term, so useful. Um, huh. And of course, so lovely because you write like a poet. And so anybody who's been wanting to like hop into the Jen Hatmaker book club space, Shauna's book is the August book and it is so good. I told you, I think it's your best book you've ever written. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I mean it. Um, all right. That's it. That's it. Off we go. All right. Love you. Days. Great to love talk you to you. Too. Okay. Bye everybody. See ya.